So the first study is about Hodgkin lymphoma patients and more particularly about the young classical Hodgkin lymphoma patients who stay in remission for a certain number of time. So what the aim of the study was, was to provide updated information on the relapse risk and the loss in life expectancy of Hodgkin lymphoma patients given that they stay in remission for, for example, two or three years. And this information can be interesting, for example, because it can provide information for patients to start with, and it also is interesting for providing the backbone of rational follow-up programs. So if the relapse risk becomes low, at one point it's not efficient or it costs too much money to keep following those patients for a long amount of time. So uh, to do this study, we used data from population-wide registers from Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, and we ended up with a cohort of 2,582 patients, which is quite large. And a nice thing about these uh, register studies is that they cover the whole population. So quite often, these clinical trials that you'll see reported only include patients who were selected, and they often do quite a lot better than what you would expect in the real world. So by using these real-world patients of just any patient in diagnosed in Denmark, Sweden, and Norway, we avoid, avoid this kind of selection bias. Uh, the first main result that we see is that for these young classical Hodgkin lymphoma patients, the initial five-year relapse risk is about 13%. However, if they survive two years without experiencing a relapse, then this actually decreases to 5%. So given that you survive or stay in remission for two years post-diagnosis, then the, the relapse risk in the upcoming five years is below 5%, which is quite reassuring to patients. The second thing that you notice is that uh, when you stratify these analysis according to whether or not patients are limited or advanced stage at diagnosis, and you see that initially advanced stage patients have about double the risk of relapsing in the upcoming five years as limited patients, stage patients. However, for those patients who survive three years and stay in remission for three years, the difference is actually basically non-existent anymore. So this is very reassuring for advanced stage patients who stay in remission for three years. So the fact that they were advanced stage at diagnosis has basically no further influence on the relapse risk anymore. The other results describe the uh, loss of life expectancy. So when you look at how, man, how many, how much time are Hodgkin lymphoma patients or Days are they expected to uh, lose due to their diagnosis when you compare it to healthy people from the general population then you can see that it's actually quite limited so if you will follow patients for five years they will be expected to survive about 40 days less than general people or pe people from the general population however if they survive five years and remain in remission for five years this reduces to about 10 days and in addition, especially for limited stage patients, this becomes negligible given that they survive two years. So given that the limited stage, stage patients survive two years and don't experience a relapse, their loss in life expectancy is essentially zero. So they perform essentially as well as you would expect a healthy patient person to perform. So I think one of the main implications is that uh, a lot of these uh, follow-up programs for relapses don't, are not really based on too much data these days. So, but given that the relapse risk of patients who remain in remission for two years is very limited, uh, it might be very interesting to not follow these patients after these two years and instead focus on late toxicities, which are more of a problem. So you could save money by not uh, trying to detect relapses, which are very unlikely to happen and instead use that money to focus on late toxicities like cardiovascular disease or second malignancies.